Would you like to have a tool that will allow you to make better rockets? It's called Roxim 10, and that's what I'm going to cover in this video. Welcome to Advanced Construction Videos, where we show you how to tackle rocketry building techniques and more. On our website, we sell kits, motors, building supplies, and electronics. So come and learn, shop, build, and fly when you visit us at ApogeeRockets.com. Hi, I'm Tim Van Milligan from Apogee Components. Roxim 10 is now available. We're, we're really excited about it, and a lot of people have been waiting for years for this to come out. And I want to cover what's going on in version 10 and what's new and exciting. Uh, the first thing is that, uh, I'll give you a little history. Uh, we, the last version of Roxim, version 9, came out in 2009. So it's been over almost 11 years since that program has been released. And uh, so, what happened late last year is that we finally bought out the code uh, and we took the code internally before it was done by an outside developer. Now it's done internally. So our f this first release is more about having our own programmer in-house learn where everything is in the program. Um, it's a big program. It's got a lot of tentacles everywhere and it's very complex and so it takes some time to learn. So this first version doesn't have a lot of big new features, but it's got some some nice stuff that I think you're going to enjoy. Um, so um, let me kind of show you what you're going to see. You know, I'm going to turn on my computer here and bring up Roxim. Um, the first thing you'll notice is that the look of Roxim has changed. Uh, we updated the graphics, try to give it a more modern feel, make it easier to use, and that's one of the big features that we tried to do with this new version is make it easier to use. We got, you know, over 10 years of comments from version 9 on uh, what things that uh, people liked, what they didn't like, what was causing stumbling blocks, and we want to eliminate those as much as possible. So that's, the, you know, a lot of the little things that we did that you'll see were for that reason. Uh, one of them is... Um, when you go to launch a rocket, one of the things you'll notice is there's a lot more motors in the database now. Uh, one of the things that I did, and this took me over a month to do, this is the NAR Tripoli Canadian Association of Rocketry Certified Engine List. And it's uh, 23 pages of data, uh, you know, all the motors that were created that are certified to use by modelers. And I had to go through the list one after another. That's why you see them all highlighted. Some of the motors I couldn't find, um, so they're in red. Um, but this took me a month to do to update the database because customers wanted more motors. And so now they're in there. Um, so you're going to see those motors. Um, another thing when you pick a motor, like on this rocket here, I'm picking an Estes uh, B4 motor. Um, when you go to the ejection delays, you'll notice that a couple of things have changed. Uh, one is plugged. In the past, we called plugged motors none. And people didn't know what none meant. Um, and there was also an all, and that confused people even more. So we got rid of the all and we change none to plugged. A plugged motor means that it has no ejection charge. So the motor just fires, and the rocket's gonna coast up, and then it's just gonna keep on coasting down because there's nothing to eject the parachute. So that's called a plugged motor, and that's what you'll see in Roxham. And there's also one called custom. So when you bring up custom, you can add a custom delay that you want for the motor. And it's pretty easy, you just click on the buttons. Uh, you can also type in a number. So if you wanted 2.35, um, you can have exact delays. And now this is really good for a lot of people, you know, they'll find the optimum delay and the, del the optimal delay would be like 2.35s. This is good for if you're, you're setting electronics, like a timer or something like that. Um, normally you wouldn't use it, but if you wanted to check to see if it's actually the optimal delay, this is where you would use it. Um, and so that is another of the new features. One, the biggest new feature, and I did this one for me, uh, because if you go to the Apogee website, and I'm sure you've been there, and you looked at a rocket kit, and you scroll down to the recommended motors, and you see these huge charts, 
and these charts have, you know, hundreds of motors listed there. Well, in the past, we had to run those simulations one at a time, and it was very time consuming and cumbersome to do that. Um, it would take like a whole day to do a rocket. And if you get like into 29 millimeter motors, 38 millimeter motors, and if you look on this list, that's where the number of motors like really starts to increase. There's over 200 29 millimeter diameter motors on this list. So imagine me having to do 200 simulations in a row and each of them takes, you know, 30 or 40 seconds a piece. It takes a long time. So we wanted to condense that for me, but it's a really good tool for you for your picking motors. Now, I, in the past, I did a video on selecting rocket motors, and it was a two-part video, and it showed you all the steps that I go through to pick motors. Um, and it was quite cumbersome, and I wrote this in 2004, uh, but now we've automated that procedure. And if you go here to rocket motors, first let me clear the motors out. Uh, because you don't have to have a motor loaded in here to use this feature. You just come to the rocket motors and click on recommended motors. Now, uh, let, me, let me tell you something here. Sometimes this button is going to be grayed out so that you can't click it. And you're going to be frustrated. Why can't I click this button? Because I really wanted to find all the motors. And the reason you can't click it is because it only works when there's one engine mount in the rocket. So if you have a two-stage rocket, you have two engine mounts. And that can get like really confusing because now you don't know which motor it's selecting to be the optimal delay or you know which motor it's trying to optimize. So it's it's limited to just rockets that have one engine mount in them. So that's why it's going to be grayed out. So this particular rocket only has one so I can just click on it. And when you do it brings up this little chart and Every rocket, um, the delay you select and the rocket motor you select depends on the weather conditions. So the first thing you see is what the recommended weather conditions are. And these are the ones that I use when I pick motors. Um, and then you can select, you can sort by manufacturer or engine type, you know, single use, you know, you can, you'll see them here. Um, if you click on it, you can have unspecified single use reloadable or hybrid motors. Uh, you can also select by different manufacturers, like if I just want to go with the Estes motors and run my list. Um, because like I said, there's over 229 millimeter motors and you might not want to select all of them. You might not need the hybrid motors that are in the list. So that's why you can select which motor, motor, motor manufacturer you can choose. Uh, then you just click on the right, use, uh, you can use your values if you wanted to have your launch conditions. So if you go to a launch field on the day of the flight, you find the weather conditions, then you would use your conditions. But if it's the day before, I would use the recommended conditions. Uh, this is just kind of like a nice uh, spring afternoon, um, you know, slightly breezy. But you know, and you want to have some wind in there because you don't want to run a simulation with perfect conditions because otherwise you're not going to get good results. Um, so I'm just going to use the recommended conditions. Click the button and Roxim's running the simulations, it's analyzing the results, uh, and then it brings up a chart, kind of like the flight simulations tab, um, and it will list th all the motors that it ran, and then if you come over here to this column, it says Roxim recommends, um, and if it says recommended, that would be a good motor to use, and if it says not recommended, you can come off here to the right side and it will tell you which of the conditions failed that um, failed to be safe. Um, so again, this depends on the weather conditions. So if you run the weather conditions in a different day, it could be a recommended motor. On other days, it might not be recommended. So that's the caveat there. You got to kind of understand that weather conditions control how the rocket flies. Oh, okay, what else is new in here? Um, the other thing you're going to notice is um, if you go to load rocket uh, rocket kits, um, you'll notice that now in your design folder, we have a lot more sample designs to look at. We went to the Apogee website and we found all of our rocks and files, and this was the list that I made. Um, and it's like about eight pages of rocket kits on our website. Uh, we found all the rocks and files and we put them in there. 
Um, so you're going to have a lot more to select from, a lot more to look at. Um, there's also some examples of some really complex rockets, and there's some competition rockets in there as well. Um, and some oldies but goodies, some things that were discontinued, but I still like looking at those files. Um, so that's kind of like what's new and exciting that you're going to see. Um, I use RockSim kind of a, as a bookend when I'm designing rockets. I'll use it at the very beginning of the design process to kind of do the what if. Um, you know, kind of arrange the parts, design the parts, pick the parts. Then I'll build the rocket and that's where you come back to these advanced construction videos because I'll show you the techniques of building the rockets. And then at the end, I'm going to use it again for picking the rocket motors and, and flying, you know, getting ready for the launch day. So that's what's new in Roxim version 10. My name is Tim Van Milligan. If you have any questions about Roxim, let us know. Oh, there's one other new feature that I wanted to show you. Um, and that's this, uh, under the help menu, um, you, there's a new item called tutorial videos. And this will bring you to the Apogee website and you can watch and learn how to use Roxim by watching me teach it just like you're watching right now. So it's, a, it's, it's quick, it's easy, and it's fun. Um, you can experiment. Don't worry about breaking. Oh, there's another new feature that I want to show you in here. Um, if you ever think that Roxim is corrupted, it never is. But some people think it is. Um, we have a new feature in here called Factory Reset. So if you go to the Preferences, of Roxim on Macintosh, it's under the Roxim menu. On Windows, it's under the Edit menu. Um, if you go here to the Miscellaneous tab, there's a button called Factory Reset, and it basically resets Roxim to like it's brand new, right out of the box. Um, you you should never need it because Roxim is very stable. So <laughs> that's it. That's all the new features. My name is Tim Van Milligan. You're watching the Apogee Rocketry Workshop. May the winds be light. May the rock. The skies be blue and may all your rockets fly straight and true.